Hi, I'm Rob Harrison from Longhead Music and today I'm listing these four huge acoustic screens that we're uh, no longer going to be needing at the recording studio here. They're hand built by myself and uh, as you can see they're quite large, perfect for making vocal booths out of. Uh, they're very easy to move around, they're on, um, I'll show you these huge heavyweight casters and they're quite sturdily built um, very easy to move around and also the two front casters are locking so you can use your foot to push down on those and lock them in place and that stops them from moving around both of the uh, two front casters here are locking casters and the, uh, the rear casters are standard so that you can lock it and stop it from moving um, quite easily without having to go around all four of them. The uh, screens are very large, um, they're also very heavy. The internal core of the screen is a heavyweight piece of uh, plasterboard um, which stops the sound from travelling through the screens. Um, uh, basically you need that weight to uh, force the sound to go around rather than through the screens. Um, the front part of the screens here is made out of uh, rock wool insulation covered in a thin fabric membrane to stop it from getting in your fingers uh, or anything. Um, and that's sealed all the way round. As you can see. Now, there's been a little bit of damage on these screens recently. I would have uh, liked to have been able to repair them myself before we're selling them, but we are going to be moving um, out of this space uh, fairly soon, and we're not going to be able to store these screens, so we are going to have to sell them before we move. Um, and as you can see, someone's come in and made some small rips to the uh, front fabric on that screen, and some smaller rips on the fabric on this screen, which is really unfortunate, but unfortunately we don't have the time to repair them here. I should think it'd be quite easy to do. You could just get a, a square of fabric, in fact, and cover them up if you wanted, or if you wanted to, around the sides of each screen, there are some, some screws that could be undone to release the... Um, fabric on the front and the whole, fab the whole of the fabric on the front could be quite easily replaced. Now um, these screens were built by me and uh, designed in such a way so that the front of the screen here, as you can see, is um, an absorption screen. It's designed to be placed around a, uh, a musician, a singer, a drummer, Anyone that you want, really, that you want to control uh, the sound of the room, shorten the reverb time in the room itself. So the rear of the screen I've left uncovered. Um, as you can see, there's a, there's a box around the inside of the rear of the screen. Now, the purpose for this is that I wanted to um, build a Helmholtz resonator by putting a thinner sheet of boarding across the rear of these screens and then perforating it either by drilling lots of small holes that you might have seen in recording studios. It looks like pegboard and you can actually use pegboard if that's the frequency that you require. Uh, the other way you can do it is by putting uh, slats. So, uh, so putting um, thin sheets of boarding and then a gap and then another piece of boarding and then a gap. And what that will do is um, that you can tune the acoustic trap um, to the frequency in the room that you want to get rid of. Uh, so in, this room is quite large. It's got lots of very, very low frequencies. Um, and we haven't actually gotten round to building the resonators on the back here. Um, but what you could do when it gets to your studio and you know the frequencies that are problem uh, frequencies in your room is you could build a resonator on the back here by simply putting a piece of boarding across the back and doing the maths, drilling a few holes 
um, to choose, select the frequencies that you wanted to um, get rid of. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could also put some uh, rock, uh, a bit of rock wool in the back here, which would uh, make widen the spectrum of the frequency that you were going to get rid of. Um, so if you wanted like 200 hertz, you could do the maths, figure out how many air gaps you need to add to the piece of board for 200 hertz, drill those holes, put the boarding up, and then put maybe some uh, a few pieces of rock wool if you wanted to in there, and that might broaden it from, uh, make it a, a much broader trap all the way from 100 hertz to 300 hertz. It basically widens the cue of the acoustic band that you want to remove. So, two different options there. On the front, we've got a wide band absorber and also a high frequency absorber. And on the back, is up to you basically. Using a simple piece of board, you can um, build a Helmholtz resonator to the frequency that you want to remove in your room. Or if you know that there's a problem with your kick drums at a certain frequency because you've recorded in your studio before, you can quite easily build a Helmholtz, Helmholtz resonator on the back here, tune into those problem frequencies and um, uh, remove them. So as you can see, it's really easy to drag uh, these acoustic screens around. Uh, the, the wheels are very high quality ones. They cost quite a lot of money when we were building these screens. Um, and as you can see, from experience, I knew that these were going to be tricky to store. So we built the screens in such a way that they could very easily be pushed together and stored in two pairs. So if I just pull the camera down here, you can see that the feet are interlocking in between there. They've been raised up so that it can quite snugly fit two traps next to each other with plenty of room in between. Now, these sorts of acoustic screens are used everywhere in recording studios everywhere. Um, you may hear them called gobos, um, as in go-betweens. You, you, you may hear them called lots of different names. Um, but the idea is uh, you can quite easily separate off your room into different sections. So maybe, if, uh, for example, in this room, you might have a drummer recording over there. Um, and then over here, have a guitarist and a singer. And you can quite easily use the screens to separate off the two areas. And although you, you do get spill around the screens, they do, you know, sound does travel around the screens, the direct sound is stopped. And that's important to make sure that you don't get phasing and that your, um, the sound of your recordings is a, is a good quality. Um, so you can also put these screens on their side. And we do that quite a lot in, in recordings. So, for example, you have a double bass player that's standing up and you have an acoustic guitarist, perhaps over there, who's set up uh, playing acoustic guitar. You want them to have line of sight. You want them to be able to see each other. What I normally do is put one screen between the two of them, um, tip it on its side, and it's quite easy for one musician to be able to see over the top of the screen, the double, the double bass player, but the acoustic guitar isn't going to go into his microphone uh, on his double bass because of the, it would have to go round the screen first. These um, screens are fairly wide. They have to be over a metre wide because otherwise the sound can, will, will simply go round them and you don't have a dead spot behind them. Um, these are over a metre wide specifically for that purpose so that uh, so the sound doesn't just disappear around them, that there is a dead zone behind, which is useful. These are also perfect for um, making vocal booths out of. If you put four of them together and close them up around a singer, or I can, you can quite easily do it with two by just simply pushing them together in a V-shape, a bit like that, and then having them, the singer stand where I am now and a microphone in front of me like this. 
and that makes a very good vocal booth. Um, and it stops the reflections that you're hearing now in this quite large room going into the microphone. Um, if you wanted to record a singer live, perhaps, with, a, with another musician, an acoustic guitarist or something like that, uh, you'd probably want to close off the singer a little bit more and you could use a few more screens in different positions to separate between the two uh, musicians. So there's loads of different things that you can do with these things. Um, these are done to a design that I took from Fortress Studios and that I've also seen used at uh, Abbey Road and Maloco in London. It's a very, very simple design. Um, basically, inside, there's the uh, piece of plasterboard, which is the actual active stopper for the sound. It stops the sound from, uh, from going anywhere and, and reflects it. And then you have the fairly thick rock wool insulation which, uh, of course, the sound has to go through it twice because it hits that sheet of high-density, uh, extra-weight plasterboard and reflects back. Um, and so once the sound goes through the front section, it has to come back out the other section, so you get twice the um, absorption for your money uh, on each of these. And it really is quite odd. If I, come, if I keep talking and get very close to this acoustic screen... You can perhaps hear the effect that it's having on my voice uh, through the microphone of my iPhone here. Um, if I move further back away from the acoustic screen, you can hear the sound open up and it gets a lot louder in the room. So, you know, you can, you can really hear the difference. If I, was to, if I put my ear next to this acoustic screen here, it sounds... There's just nothing coming, coming through my left ear. If I move further away, it's really quite incredible the difference that, that these things make. Uh, and that's all down to the uh, Rockwell uh, absorb, absorption uh, of the Rockwell insulation in these screens. Now, I'll get a tape measure and we'll have a look at how big they are. OK, so these screens are all um, identical size-wise. The only difference between the screens is the position of the feet, as you can see, so that they lock together nice and easy when they're being stored against a wall, for example. Um, they're very steady. I can shake them. They're not going to fall over, and despite the fact that they're very heavy, uh, they're very easy to move and, and, and very sturdy and stable. They're not going to fall over on any of you musicians. That's for sure. Okay, so, measurements. So, that's exactly... Four foot wide there, that's 122 centimetres in width. Um, the depth of the acoustic screens, obviously two of them can be stacked together, um, but the, the depth of the actual screen itself is quite simple. It's 20 centimetres. So that's just over just under eight inches thick. Uh, for, the, for the screens themselves, that's how thick they are. Um, obviously, when they're being driven in a van, you've got to take into account for the feet. So we'll have a look at that in a minute, and I'll give you actual figures on how uh, wide the feet are. But for the moment, let's look at the overall height. Eight foot seven inches or 260 centimetres in height. And that's all the way down to the wheelbase. That's measured from the very top of the screens all the way down to the wheelbase. Now, please check if you're thinking of having a van um, move these screens for you. Please check that they'll fit lengthways in your van altogether. So now the difficult uh, measurement is going to be the two screens joined together. And that is 84 centimetres or 33 inches. So that's 84 centimetres, 33 inches wide. Now you have to remember that if you're actually putting these in a van, um, you'll probably put one in feet first and one in head first. Um, and if, if you have a look at the bottom there, there's these, these bits that stick out here can be pushed either way around the screens. 
So it's important to make sure that your van can take the length of these screens. I can't, the, the last time we moved it, we, used it in, uh, we moved it in an extra long uh, transit van. So um, make sure that whichever van you decide to use, if you're collecting or if we're sending it to you, um, is going to be able to fit the screens in lengthways on their side. Now, I can tip one of these screens over onto its side myself. Um, not everyone would be able to, I'd imagine, um, because they are quite heavy. So when you're, having, when you're getting them moved, I'd really recommend that you have two people there to, uh, to move them along the ground, twist them. They will go through a standard door on their side, but you need to make sure that you don't damage your carpet by dragging them along the, um, along the carpet. Um, two people is, is definitely uh, the minimum, I think, for moving them into the studio. Once they're in the studio and upright on their ends, even two together, it's very easy to push along the floor um, and they're very, really very easy to use. So to sum up, here are four acoustic screens for sale. Um, they're Rockwell insulated, high bandwidth absorbers on the front, and the rears are open to do whatever you like with as far as a Helmholtz resonator, or you could quite easily put some more Rockwell in there and cover them with another piece of fabric and have a second absorber on the other side of the screen. There are plenty of options open there. The uh, plasterboard is placed in the middle of the screen, exactly, so that gives you plenty of room to either leave air gaps if you want to do a Helmholtz resonator on the other side, or put ro more rock wool in if you want to make a broadband absorber on that side of the screen. Um, so there are plenty of options there, and I hope they find a good home. They've certainly been really useful for me. Um, if I could store them, I wouldn't be getting rid of them, but they are quite large, and uh, we've got lots of equipment to store uh, in our studio move. So unfortunately, they'll have to go, uh, and hopefully um, they'll find a good home and an another good studio to make some more good music in. Thanks very much.